Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man, with no T. Yeah. In today's video, we're going to make a little spaceship using just some old plastic containers and things you normally would throw away. I rewatched the video recently. Uh, that's one of my favorite DR Toys videos right there. Although I like all his videos, that one right there, something about the just somewhat the simplicity of it and the container shape and everything. It just made me think, you know, I wonder if I could do something like that, if we got something. Literally not even playing. We just gone to find, you know, candy containers. That's some mouthwash right there. You know, uh, candy, uh, peppermints, mentos. I thought that was pretty neat because look, that's just automatically, don't that suggest something to you? Like a speeder, some kind of seasoning and that Seasoning tasted real bad. Uh, that's what it is right there. Uh, it's Lucas. And let's see. And so, that's the. Nobody remembers the 90s crap, man. So I like to come in here and just say, all right, what are we going to start with? All right. I don't mean to sound like Fru Fru RC McDoodle, but. Sometimes you do kind of let the pieces uh, speak to you, so to speak. They imply something to you, you know what I mean? Like, hey, look at me, I'm a spaceship. Hey, uh, that one says, and that one could be also a spaceship. We also want to look for existing opportunities. So just imagine, if you will, look at Dusty. It could be blasters right on the side of it. And look at this. That might be where the pilot goes right there. I actually been wanting to use this gentleman right there. So today might be the day. I don't know. Let's keep looking. We can even take and just go with a classic, uh, a classic UFO design right there. You know, might cut that bubble down a little bit, but you know. Oh, yeah, craft man. By the way, all I do is I look for matching contours, matching contours, pieces that fit like a puzzle. Look at that, that just got to go together down there. Wow, that's crazy. I like that kind of stuff. I always like to look for matching diameters uh, because you can get a, a immediately professional a finished look to it, you know. You join those edges together, it's gonna look like it was meant to be. You know, I just try things. I try things and I try things. It's extra nice when you find a real close profile match. You know what I'm saying? You can feel it when it's just, oh, it just feels like you just put glue and it's just gonna be there forever. It feels like, like it's just meant to be. Did I say I like that kind of stuff? I like that kind of stuff. Cause nine times out of 12, it's going to look way better than what craft man can come up with, you know. It's always pretty fantastic if you just have something on hand and you could just go straight to cutting it. There is something to be said about the thrill of the hunt. Try this next time you go to the dollar store. Instead of going straight for the toy section, I mean, I'm assuming that's where you go. Go look through beauty products. Go look through uh, eye drops containers and, and, and healthcare. And look through uh, candy containers especially. My buddy Dan does right here. Just how much plastic waste is there? Is real good at combining candy containers to make new interesting things. Also check out his channel. And Craft Man just keeps on gravitating back towards this Mentos container. So, uh... I guess this is going to be the base of our spatial. But first, let's talk about something. So what I like to do is first if I take it, all right, let's see. That this might be part of my obsessive compulsive, but I like to find the seam in the plastic. 
that goes around this see there see there and then i would like to just orientate to where this is perpendicular that is perpendicular with so see there and then I get it about right so i like to have the broad strokes in mind before i get too far into it meaning like we already know we want some some little gun on us right there and we we i want to have some kind of propulsion coming out the back of it uh but let's see this Advil uh, cap is kind of a neat match because it's got some similar design characteristics, but that does not make a lot of sense. It needs to be uh, like that, lined up with the length of the aircraft. That, it looks kind of cool, but it don't make sense. It would need to be lined up in the direction that uh, the craft would travel. We could just glue it and then kind of open it like that, but I feel like that would look a little wonky. So what I like to do is look for reference faces, flat areas that we can use to determine a perpendicular uh, coming out the back, you know, for example. And you can take something like that now and then, let's see. All right, so if you put something straight enough and come out, oh, there, that's going to be lined up. So then you would just have to, you know, something like something like that right there does that make sense if you didn't want to fool with having something come parallel to keep that uh lines up for you you can get kind of creative and uh you could get a little creative and come in here and now watch this yeah let's get up i hope that's a good illustration but basically you're able to convert angles by using round shapes so if you need straight and you need also parallel you can introduce a spherical object and then now you have parallel this is not going i hope it makes sense okay i want you to think about mechanical design and it's almost like you need to think like a, a engineer you know about this and craftsman is not an engineer all right craftsman is a, a pretend engineer basically and this is where we can generally reach project paralysis what i call it where we have so many options and we'll just see here we won't cut we won't glue nothing because we scared to we think we're gonna put the wrong piece and mess up the whole i got one chance at this we might be thinking just like well let's go do something different this easy no let's just see what happens it's going to reward you if you stay with it so you got to make a decision, uh, kid bash tonight, or we can stay this way. Could have come up with a better joke than that, craft man. Now, I just want to make sure that you are not uninformed, okay? When you go to glue food-safe plastics like polypropylene, polyethylene, it's not going to want to take glue very well. they designed to resist sticking, all right? There's a number of things that we can do. For pesky label residue that's stuck to the plastic, uh, I recommend some goo gum. Yeah, pretty fantastic goo gum. At a bare minimum, you are going to do some alcohol and just try, try to just, you know, Remove any type of mold release or grease or anything that might be keeping it from sticking. Uh, you also can try something like plastic adhesion promoter. All right, but if you use adhesion promoter, please wear a dust mask. You could also take some abrasive and do some light sanding. All right, that's going to give you more tooth, T-O-O-T-H. If you decide to abrade the surface or sand it, please wear a dust mask. Although you can do wet sanding, that's even safer because it keeps all them plastic particles suspended in water instead of floating around in the air where you can breathe them. If you use a torch, please use a dust mask. Craft man, what you talking about a torch? Flame annealing, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the most recommended, but it's what they use in the industry to get ink to stick onto plastic cups and things like that. They use a flame, a light flame.
So I realized I want this to go inside of that. And I should have cut my circle out ahead of time, but that's part of kid bashing. I guess it is a good stopping point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Oto7. Oto, is this paper edible? Please tell me that it's just some kind of rice paper or something. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that layer is edible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. So for me, the piece of the resistance is going to be to put this capsule on there. That's when it's really going to. Yeah, baby. It mostly lines up on the front. See the, but the back of it. We got a little gap in there we got to fill. I'm going to use some epoxy scout. While the epoxy sculpt clay cures, let's work on our little pilot. My man needs a helmet if he's going to go into space, right? Huh? Yeah. Uh, that was too small. That might work. I'm just hesitant to do to use a pre-made, you know, model kit thing, but 
Uh, what do y'all think? I'm going to try and make us a little, a little steering, a little control right there. Yeah, Craftman is quite shaky. I've been quite shaky for a good few years now. And uh, so far the doctor says I'm all right. So, but thank you everybody for your concern about that. Let's prime it. I really like how priming it just kind of ties everything together you know all right so look at that ladies and gentlemen we got us a little something i want to give it a metallic -y kind of look but obviously we don't want to paint over some of these things so we're just going to use a little mix right though yeah all right and craftsman just using some little rattle can some spray paint And now for another piece to resistance, we want to put our little palette in. All right, so I want to add some little paint here and there to kind of break things up a little bit. I want a gray color, and normally I would just mix black and white to get gray. Except for in today's video, I want to use a little bit of a a tan color you know because that will give us a warmer gray and we're going for a star wars rustic kind of palette and then i actually just go and just add uh, colors to change that gray slightly and i'll just continue on painting things pretty lazy approach actually I think now it's time for some black wash, which is nothing more than oil-based black paint mixed with a little mineral spirits. Very relaxing to do a uh, black washing like that. For this video, I resisted using a ton of rust and a ton of rivets. That's my favorite things to do. But I said, let's just go a little bit sci-fi dirty, sci-fi dirty, not too crazy. Whenever I'm sanding, whenever I'm painting, I like to think about direction. So I like to give me some little streets going in the direction of the spacecraft travel. Uh, that right there is not very clean. I completely understand that, but uh, what Craftsman is going to do is I'm going to paint that inside edge of that bubble right there. Look at that.
I hope y'all enjoyed it. Don't be intimidated. Just, oh, I got some on my. Oh. Where'd it go? I had some on my lip and I blew it off and then whatever happened to it. On behalf of Oto Seven, I am Craft Man. This has been Steady Craft. Yeah. All right, Oto, I want you to take it. All right. Uh, I love y'all and keep on. Keep on. I love y'all and keep out instead of crafty. Just like that, we have a couple of guns, couple of... Oh. Come on now, okay, right. I'm a pilot, you know, and someday I'm going to leave this package. That's the one. That's a good joke, Craft Man.